Hello, Shalom. Shalom, Rastafari. Greetings, Rastafari. Ine, I am. Ine, Arasi, Adinos, Tafari, Neng. I'm Ras Iadonis Tafari, or Wendem Yadon, of the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty, and this is still the Asara Sabatenya, um Sinbetawi Wur, um, or Samint, Samintawi, or Rit Nebab, the Torah portion, this this week's, or this weekly um, Samintawi, Bamarinya, this week's Torah portion is is um called Yotor or Jethro. Now we had attempted to um point out the connection and link with um um Yishrun and Osar um from ancient Egypt and the connection with Musa or Moses. What we wanted to touch on this week and you know there's been a lot of um news um this particular week, February, Valentine's week, um, from the Sabbath, Friday, Saturday, the death of Whitney Houston, so forth and so on. Now, some may say, well, that's not really significant. As far as the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, it is very significant. But what we want to touch on and what we had, uh, what we had touched on previously is the brotherhood. Or the the reformation of the adjudication, because we read um, previously in this portion, um, chapter eighteen, concerning Musa and the advice that his father-in-law Jethro had given to him concerning what he was doing. In judging the people from evening to morning and being all alone in that task. Now, this will help us to 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 bring even this forward for a moment. Now, this is this is uh, Cherui or Horus Cherui. Bamarinya Cherui means the chosen in, in the in from the Gutas in the Gutas or the Ethiopic Kherui Kheru Kherui means chosen or the the elect. So it's a it's a part of the Afro Shemitic language, the root. This is further confirmation and verification. Um this is further verification that that the root of ancient Egypt is the Tob or the Tobia. The Bible calls it a land that is shadowing with the wings. Now, which particular wings? Well, these particular wings right here. The wings of the Kharui Behutet wings. Now, we also find that in this particular Sabbatical, um, Sabbatical portion that we're about to uh, touch on. So let's bring this a little more to size so you can see this more fully right here. And let's bring this also a little more down to size so you can see this fully too. So this is a part of that, the Ethiopic code, the Ethiopic matrix right here. So now as we move that forward, that teaching forward, we get to this part, the brotherhood or the the church militant, you know, the church triumphant. In order for the church to be triumphant, the church must be militant about the good news, about the gospel. And the advice that Moses' father-in-law, Yotor, had given to Moses concerning the adjudication and the administration of, of, of justice was the subject matter of our previous um, Torah portion reading and feeding, which we're just going to briefly recap. And that is concerning Exodus chapter 18, um, beginning roughly around verse, um, 
roughly around verse uh, 17. Well, the whole section is, is, is very interesting. Um, when Jethro, his father-in-law, his Medeanite father-in-law, who also initiated Moses into the root uh, mishtir, or the root mysteries of ancient Egypt, or from the Tob, or Tobia, which was ancient Ethiopia, that is the land that is shadowing with those wings. Now, the main part of that instruction, we're going to get more into that, but like we have said before, a lot of these teachings and, and the study of it, to really, we're trying to give a basic overview, but to really get into the the detail and to understand the apps, the application of this is a whole semester's study, and hopefully we'll be able to um, focus our studies on certain subject matters in order to build within the structure of the kingdom of the heavens and prepare for the millennial kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. So there is an order which Jethro gives advice concerning it. He said that for, for, for Moses to be the only one who could administer justice to do these things alone. Moses' father-in-law in verse 14 of Exodus chapter 18, Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people. He said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning to evening? And Musa said, and we utilize this um, this imagery from ancient Egypt to, to, to further clarify this point. Now, of course, this is, this is the kindergarten phase of, of ancient humanity where they use um, word pictures, word pictures. The, the Hebraic now brings it more to a, a verbal hieroglyph, but that verbal hieroglyph was clearly demonstrated and has been preserved in this knowledge that is, is, is sprouting from the earth, as the scriptures say, that, that that truth shall sprout out of the earth. And as they unearth these bits and pieces of ancient Egypt, and as we, as, as once lost but now found Beta Israel, get to study it and examine it, and to study the scripture and the Ethiopic code, we begin to see the links now. We begin to see the big picture, proverbially speaking. So Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, seeing that Moses was personifying a very important feature of the ancient order, but somewhat overly um, symbolical, in other words, that's the Osar or the Osirin, the Osirin phase. Let's see if we can, if we can bring this up as well. Let's see if we have this on hand right here. The Osirin, the Osirin phase. It might be in one of these uh, particular windows, or maybe we have to, we have to research it. Again, on our available drive here. Okay, here it goes right here. Let's move this over. Okay. The Osirin phase. This is the Osirin phase where it says, And Moses sat to judge. Moses sat to judge the people. It says how Moses had sat to judge the people. We have this um, in verse 13. In verse 13, where it reads, verse 13 of Exodus chapter 18, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning to the evening. Now, we briefly touched on Jeshurun. And we'll have more time, y'all willing, to touch on Jeshurun as we go further in the scripture. And even in Deuteronomy, there is... Um, many prophetic um, references to the God of Jeshurun. So who was Yishurun? 
Yeshurun, based on our etymological studies, links directly to Osa or Wusser or Yishur, Yishur, Yishur. You know, there's a big debate on how um, that name Osar was actually pronounced in ancient Egypt among various different scholars. Unfortunately, many of them have neglected to consult with the Ethiopic. But as we now compare this Ethiopically, as well as in the Ethiopic code within the scriptures and within the Orito Torah, it becomes very clear that this Yeshurun or Jeshurun is the Hebraic equivalent of the ancient Egyptian Osor or Yeshur, Yeshur, Osor, you understand, Os, or, or what ones would call from the Greek Osiris. So this symbol right here, this um, word pick right here where Moses is sitting to judge can be clearly um, demonstrated from the available art and faculty. Let's remember this, that the Israelites were in Egypt for some 400 plus years. This means that they were, culturally speaking, Afro-Semitic, culturally speaking, they were Egyptians, like the black folks in America being here for 400 plus years. They are very much American. They think within that paradigm. So if one were to reconstruct our story thousands of years later that was written in this approximate time, one would need to understand the American culture and the world, the seclorum of this particular time. So the same thing is true for us seeking to understand um, the Bible or the Old Testament. We first of all must understand the context the context of the time, but even more importantly, the the ethnic identity of the true Hebrews, because the first word was not the God of the Jews, it was the God of the Hebrews, of the Hebrews, of the Hebrews. So this also connects the ancient Israelites or the Hebrews to that Ethiopic root. And that Ethiopic truth, after all, Moses' wife is called an Egyptian, and I mean, and, and she's called an Ethiopian. He's called an Egyptian by her because, you know, of, of the culture that he was, it's like, it's like uh, uh, African American show up in an in a, in a American uniform, an American military or some sort of uniform. You know, what would an African say? An African would say this is a American. You know what I mean? He's an American, even though it could be an African just wearing the uniform. And this is the same case with Moses when we first meet up with Moses fleeing and being in the wilderness and helping the daughters of Yotor or the daughters of Jethro, who was the high priest, of Median. So we can go through some of this, you know, additional evidence here. You see this right here. This is also important because they said this was the most ancient glyph for Osar. So you can clearly see that the throne, the throne is here and the eye is here. And then this one, this one represents the determiner, um, the determiner for, for, for the God, this, this seated figure right here. And they said this was the oldest representation of of um, Osa or Hebraically Yeshurun, Yeshurun. So the connection of Moses, and I wanted to uh, just share this with you. This is a glyph. We use this also as uh, Osiris, Isis, um, um, painting or picture, very beautiful and and symbolic of the racial identity of the Egyptians, but moreover also of the Israelites. So this glyph, or this, this pick right here could stand in for Joseph and, and the Asenat story, or the Asenit 
story, um, as well as Moses and uh, Sipara, Moses and Sipara as well, because we need to utilize word pictures in order, first of all, to put our story in its proper context, visually, visually speaking and racially speaking, because a lot of half-truths and outright lies have been um, told to our people, and this is part of the problem, the ignorance, not knowing the truth. Christ, our black Lord and Savior, says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, in moving forward with our teaching for the 17th um, um, sabbatical uh, reading and feeding known as um, Yithro or Yotor or Jethro in the English, we're going to move past this right here for right now, just, just to recap. Um, we're going to keep this around for a moment, the the Kheru uh Behutet or the chosen the chosen flying wing, flying disc. Some say this could be an ancient Egyptian um description of flying craft. Now within the portion of our of our narrative concerning the Israelites at the mount, this is very interesting because from all description it's obvious that some sort of craft, you understand, a craft from a higher civilization, not from this world, obviously was associated with that particular mount, the mount of the revelation of the the commandment, which were ten words, the ten words. That's another matter that we like to touch on as well. Many call it the Ten Commandments, but if you study it, you can document that it's not the Ten Commandments, rather it is the Ten Words, the Ten Words. It's one commandment, one commandment with ten articles. What has been called the Ten Commandments should be rather referred to as the Ten Words or the Decalogue or the Decalogos. Now, as we move over here to His Majesty in um, full salute and the three Weta de Roach or soldiers below, let's look at what we have here from Jethro, Moses' Uh, Medianite father-in-law, his Ethiopian father-in-law, concerning how Moses was judging the people. In other words, he was dealing with the administration of law and order, peace and stability in the community for all those Israelites from morning to evening by himself. And his father-in-law told him, he says, the thing that thou doest is not good. It's not tob. It's not tob ma'od. It's not very good. Well, really, he says, not tob. It's not good. Thou will surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy, is too kabod, you understand, know or kavod, is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone, to judge this people thyself alone. And even in ancient Egypt, in the judgment hall scene of Ma'at, where we have Osar on the throne, you look at the top portion of of the so-called uh, Book of the Dead or the Purt Im Kharu, and you will see there are 42 assessors, 42 assistant um, judges that also help to administer justice. This is for good order, because we're speaking about a people now coming out of captivity. They have to be responsible for their own law and order. Otherwise, they would not be able to make it out the wilderness or survive in the wilderness or enter into the promised land or conquer the promised land. And my brothers and sisters, neither will 
we. So let's hear Jethro's advice right here. Jethro goes on in verse 19 to say, Hearken now thou to my voice. I will give thee counsel. And Ha Elohim Baruchu, the true God, shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God word. In other words, you be to the people to God, that thou may bring the causes to God. In other words, bring their abetuta, bring their petitions to God. And then he goes on to say, and thou shalt teach them ordinances, teach them ordinances and laws, and shall shew them, to say, show them the way wherein they must walk, will show them the halakha, Bamarinya the akahed, will show them the, the, the walk, or in the Bible says, one's conversation in Christ, one's behavior in Christ, one's process and procedure, or the etiquette of the kingdom. And it goes on to say, um, thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shall shew them the way, the way, the way. And what does Christ, the Moshiach, says? The way, the truth, and the life, wherein they must walk, and the work, the sirah, or the work that they must do. Not that, not that they can do it if they want to. No, the the way that they must walk in order to be overcomers. This is why Revelation says that those who are those overcomers keep the commandment of God and the testimony of the Moshiach, of Yehoshua, of Jesus Christos, known as Jesus Christ. Moreover, Thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, men who are capable, able men, such as fear God or reverence, reverence Ha Elohim, men of truth, hating covetousness, hating that which is not yours, which you don't have a right to. You understand? In other words, not greedy, red eye, and gravelicious, as ones would say. Um, and place such over them to be rulers, to be rulers or to be princes, or in the Hebraic sense, to be rases or rosh, to, to be the rases of thousands. And the rulers or the heads, to say, of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Now, if what I know serves me correctly, this is the basic, this is the fundamental military order. This is the basic, I mean, it's still even practiced to this very day, although they add in other other um, sub sub um, commands betwixt and between these four main commands or these four main these four main um posts or 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 positions. So the one over ten is the corporal, the one over fifty is the is the um sergeant, the one over a hundred is the lieutenant, and the one over um a thousand is like to say the captain and if you know how the basic level of the police and and the different um pseudo um, paramilitary sort of organizations that are run on strict discipline you understand because their role and responsibility in the community or the nation is crucial both in times of peace as well as in times of war. And the key is the discipline. This is why Kedemawi Hala Selassie teaches us and reminds us that discipline of the mind is a basic ingredient in genuine morality and therefore spiritual strength. So when we speak about discipleship, 
You understand? This is this is the beginning. This is exactly where we begin at this particular level right here with the advice of Moses's father-in-law and the the high priest of the Medeanites, the one who initiated Moses so that Acts 7.22 can say that Moses was learned in all of the mysteries or the wisdom of the Egypts, and he was mighty both in word as well as in deed. Verse 22, Jethro says, and let them, these this fourfold, this fourfold um, sort of a military structure, and the church is still based on this. This is why we was highly recommending the Didascalia, because in the very beginning, the Didascalia, um, um, J. M. Harding's version, it actually points points that out. The structure of the of the church, the church is in a, has a sevenfold structure. The church has a sevenfold structure, but the base. Notice the base. It's like a pyramid in a sense. You have the base, which is fourfold, and then you have the side, which is threefold. And this is the basic structure that we have here and the so-called geometric, geometric shape. After all, he called his son out of Egypt. And let them judge the people in all seasons, year in, year out, season in, season out. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring to thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden or bear with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God, ha Elohim, command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, endurance, to endure. And all this people shall also go to the place, to their place, in peace. Be salam. So Musa, verse 24, hearken, he, he sima or shema. He hearkened or heard and obeyed to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Verse 25, and Musa chose able men, men who were capable, uh, willing and able, out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, made them rases. They became rases. This is how they became Arasas, and this is the reason why even in Judeo-Christian Ethiopia, for the past 3,000 years, there have also been the order or, and title of Rasas. They were rulers, Alika, Alika of, or Alika Woch, of thousands, like a major or a captain, rulers of hundreds, like lieutenants. Rulers of fifties like sergeants and rulers of tens like corporals or in the churchical sense, diacon, diacon. Diacon actually means, refers to ten, like the decalogue, the deacon. You understand that dia refers to ten. So we have this basic structure once again. So we can see even in the New Testament sense, it is based on the spiritual truism of the structure and the word from the Old Testament. So it goes on two more verses. says, and they judge the people at all seasons. The hard causes, like the hard cases that were beyond their purview, they brought to Musa, Musa, Bamarinya, meaning the head of, the frater, of a fraternal order, and in this case, the fraternal order of the Lewawian, of the priesthood. But every small matter, they judged themselves. Every matter that was in their purview, that they had the statutes and they knew the pertinent laws concerning the small, the regular, you know, the regular sort of issues, you understand? They judge themselves. Verse 27, And Moses let or allowed his father-in-law 
to depart, and he went his way into his own land. It doesn't say what land he went into, but we know that being a Medeanite, Median was a province, like Arabia was a province of ancient Ethiopia. It's like you have Texas and Canada and so forth and so on and, and, and Hawaii. You know, they are parts, states, they call them today, of the United States of America. And after all, ancient Obia or Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying? Ethiopia was and still is, spiritually speaking, an empire. So let us understand that. So that's what I wanted just to catch up with so now we can then now go forward to the commandments because remember what verse, um, what verse, uh, where were we? Verse uh, 20 and 21. Highlight those verses if you can. Verse 20 and 21. And let's bring this up here, Bamarinya. I think we're in chapter 19 right here, but we'll just scroll back to um, uh, chapter, here we go, chapter, chapter 18. Let's go back to chapter 18, verses 20 to 21, and get a read of this, and I and I, and I will translate, here, here we go right here. So it says, Besimaab, where we live, where men fest, Kedus, Ahadu Amlak. And here we go right here. It says, Sharatunim, Higunim, Astamracho. Yemi Hedu Betin, Menged, Yemi Yadar Gutinim, Shara Hulu, Asayacho. Sheratunim or seratunim, which is the, which is like to say when we say in in Hebrew the seder, it, it really refers to the order, the ordinance is is the order, the, the 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 order. In some sense, it's it's a structural order. It can also refer to a ceremonial order. So it can have order can be a ceremonial order or it can be more an like an app, uh, an application, and usually referring to religious or spiritual or 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 holy festivals. How these festivals is like like to keep the Sabbath kedus. You know what is done, what is to be done, what is not to be done. The higunim astamracha. Well, that's his law. So his order, it says. His order and his law, Astamracho. Now, many people have made you believe that um, up until Moses, there was no law. Because the Bible says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Well, that is true. But then if you go further to the Old Testament, Yahweh says concerning Abraham that he kept my charge, he kept my laws, he kept my, he kept my command and my statute. So there were laws. You understand? There were laws before Moses. But at this state of a nation building after 400 years of bondage or being in, in a, a, another land and assimilated somewhat into another culture, and another people and neglecting your own promised land and your own inheritance, that was the state of the Beta Israel. Now as they were coming out, they had to be um reconditioned. You know, they had to be reconditioned. You know, it's just like black folks or Negroes, if they decided to go to Africa, they would also have to be um, reconditioned, relearned, retaught, reprogrammed, I guess you can call it. Verse 21, it says, Antem, and you, male, kahizbu hulu, awak iwo chin, in other words, knowledgeable ones from all the people. So when it says able, here the targum will be awak iwo, in other words, mature, adult. Another way of saying awak would be um, adult. 
but literally it means one who knows, one who's who's a knower, not one who is ignorant. Antemka hizbuhulu awaki wochin egziyabi harin yemiya farutin, and ones who reverence or have a uh, far eye to tethari. In other words, they, they have a reverence to the sustainer, egziyavihir, to Yahweh. Yetamenu, those who are faithful, those who are tamen or yetamenu. Yegifnima reba yemiya telutina soch miret. Violence, um, and like to say, violence and extortion and, and corruption, those who hate that, men who hate that, miret, choose them. And that word miret, bamarinya, when we look at that in the gutters, that is the word from the root um, charui. Charui. That's from that very root charui to 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 choose and khir, even in egzi abe khir, also is that that chosen that goodness that election, the khir, and so you have a contraction of charu in the Ethiopic name of Yahweh or Yahweh's name before the creation of the world, which is only preserved in the Ethiopic, because Ethiopia is the first place mentioned on the map. And for good reason, since it is in our brother Moses's first book, seeing that he received his higher initiation in the Tob, in the good land, Tobia or Etopia, through his Medeanite father, in law Jethro, all that makes sense that that would be written the way it was written. Kanarsum Yeshi Alek Ochin, and from them of thousand heads, heads of thousands, Yemeto Alek Ochin, and heads of hundred, Ya Amsa Alek Ochin, and heads of fifty, Ya Asharim Alek Ochin. Shumlacho, a point, a point for them, and heads of tens, a point for them. So the basic idea here is that there's a qualification, and notice there's a qualification, a very detailed and very appropriate qualification. Even today, in any business or organization, if you choose people like this and are able. Yah willing, pray, and, and Yah give you good co-workers and co-laborers like this, then you will have a successful business or a successful endeavor. And it's very important that we pay attention to this. And not that any of us is so-called perfect or ready or right, but that's where basic training, that's where the boot camp comes in. You understand? That's where studying and showing ourselves approved. That's where watching and praying, you know, comes in. That's where remembering to keep the senbet. That's the test command right there. Remembering to keep the senbet, yet holy and set apart. So, as we move forward now, now when we move forward, we're going to get into the commands. And we're going to touch on the commandment keepers. And this brother to the, that would be your left, you understand, that would be visually, it would be on your right if you see it, but of his majesty's left, his non-saluting hand, you see um, Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew of the commandment keeper um, congregation, one of the oldest of the black Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews, it's from him that we derive the, the description or the name of being Ethiopian Hebrews. And this brother went on the record, 
as early as the 1920s and 30s to say that he derives his spiritual authority from Kedamawi Haile Selassie, who is not only king of kings of Ethiopia, but he is the true king of Israel upon the throne of David. And he's holding a, a Torah scroll um, rolled out and in front of him. And here's where we're going to go into in chapter 19 and try to connect this with uh, Mishpatim, um, which is Sharat Bamarinya is the Sharat Sharat or the ordinance. Where we are going to learn of the ordinance. Now, notice how all this comes together. Jethro, he saw what Moses was doing all by him lonesome. You understand? Because he was probably one of the few that really had the the knowledge. You understand? Um, had the had the reverence of Yahweh. Had that he went through the initiation. And what Jethro is basically saying is now that you have been brought, in a sense, on board, you have to also set a structure and bring others on board because this is a great work. You understand? All hands, in other words, must come on deck. And brothers and sisters, this is the same thing that we're saying, not just for a line of Jew society, but for the society, the greater society of his imperial majesty and his Christ, that all hands must get on deck. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. We're going to get into Yahweh and get into the commandments, um, or rather, See, we have to even train ourselves out of it, you know, by, by, by programming. We hear the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments. But as we study it, we learn that it's actually the Ten Words. Here it goes right here. It's the, it's the Ten Words. The Ten Words, which, is, which comprise one commandment. And this one commandment, is Yahweh or Jah's pure, is the pure law. It is forever and ever and ever. And shame on those counterfeit Christian preachers and pastors and others that had made ones to believe that Yah's pure command is no more. In fact, Christ did not come to do away with the law. He came to magnify it. He came to perfect it. He came to show the way where we cannot be under the judgment of the law, but we can become in laws. So we keep we keep it in and through the Moshia. We keep it in and through our black Lord and Savior, Jesus. Christ, Yehoshua HaMoshiach. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned for the next part of this, which hopefully um, will be on the commandments. We're going to be, pick up from chapter 19 and continue from there to chapter 20 and somehow try to tie this in and just segue this into the Shabbat um, Asara Simentenya and the 18th, which is in the Hebrew Mishpatim or Mishpatim, which means judgments, and Bamarinya, it is uh, Serat, which means the ordinances or the order. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. More to come, Yah willing. Shalom Ras Teferi.